All right, guys. It is yet another blissfully rainy night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Oh, it's gorgeous. It is now Monday night, September 12th, 2022. We are two days away from the from the big shindig, so not sure how many uh, rants I'm going to be doing over the next few days. So I tell you what, we're going to go ahead and record two and I'm going to run one tonight and maybe stick one out tomorrow night. And I don't know when you're going to hear from me again. Hopefully you will be joining us at the shindig. Any of you late bloomers wanting to come join us, uh, send me an email to collapsechronicles at gmail.com. All right, so uh, this morning, the story from the L.A. Times from a fellow named Nicholas Goldberg. I have no idea who Nicholas is. It had a completely different headline. This morning... The uh, the headline for this story is we cannot compartmentalize ourselves out of this one. And at some point today, the editors either at L.A. Times or Yahoo News, you know, I just have to get this off my chest. The, 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 the son of a bitch needs to be fired. So here is the new headline: Nicholas Goldberg. Humanity is at risk. We are not we facing up to it. We are not we facing up to it. There you go. You know, this is like a 42-point uh, bold headline. You know, this is going out all over the planet. Yahoo News, Los Angeles Times, we are not we facing up to it. Anyway, and uh, there might be a little bit of a C-word rant in the middle of this, guys. I just can't help myself. I will try to limit it. Take it away, Nicholas. Tell us why we cannot compartmentalize ourselves out of this. You know, I just was talking, I think it was after my interview, my official interview with Robert Jensen, uh, last week after we, you know, we just were hanging out after the interview and uh, talking some more, and he was, we were having this discussion about compartmentalizing, how doomers need to learn to compartmentalize. Otherwise, if you spend all day thinking about this doomer porn crap, uh, you're going to end up like Michael Rupert. Like, I spend a lot more of my time, you know, building tiny houses and growing dahlias and uh, gladiolas and tomatoes uh, and driving around in my gas-sucking truck. You have to learn to turn off the Doomer stuff and compartmentalize it. Put it in the Doomer box over here so you can have somewhat of a normal life and not end up like Michael Rupert. So, uh, while I do agree that we cannot, we cannot compartmentalize our way out of this, it's the only way that I have found out how to, you know, just get through the day, get out there and enjoy it while you still can. This is another way of saying compartmentalize it. Okay? Understand what is going on on this planet. Deal with it the best you can. And then figure out what you're going to do for the rest of your life knowing that we are, you know, sorry. Once you understand this, what are you going to do? You're going to compartmentalize it. Or you're going to go batshit. Anyway, that was just my lead up to this rant. Take it away, Nick Goldberg. 
Like most people, I am a compartmentalizer. For years, I went blithely about my business, doing my work, watching movies, celebrating birthdays, while only rarely thinking about the end of the world. But as I get older and the threats to people and the planet grow more grave and imminent, I find it increasingly difficult to go too long without a pang of panic. A pang of panic. I have to admit, I have a lot more pangs of panic. Like, you know, I'm dealing with this, this damn bill from the Pennsylvania Turnpike for $92 when I accidentally got on the Pennsylvania Turnpike for one exit and I turned around and now they're charging me $92. This is what gives me a pang of panic more than the end of the world. This is what you get when you compartmentalize. You have the end of the world, you have a bill from the Pennsylvania Turnpike. And right now the bill from the Pennsylvania Turnpike it has more space in my brain than the end of the world. Getting back to Nick. <clears throat> okay, I find it increasingly difficult to go too long without a pang of panic. It was not particularly helpful when I recently read a paper from the U.S. National Intelligence Council talking about existential threats to mankind. They included, quote, runaway artificial intelligence, engineered pandemics, nanotechnology weapons, and do not forget, nuclear war. I am more worried, I have more of a pang of panic about the runaway human stupidity. Okay, we have runaway human stupidity versus runaway artificial intelligence. Since we have no human intelligence, it is a race between human stupidity and artificial intelligence. Yes. All right. Did I say that this was from the Los Angeles Times, this weird story showing up here in the mainstream media? These perils, as the report put it, quote, could damage life on a global scale, close quote. They could mean humanity's extinction in the relative short term. Yes, here we have, okay, it sounds like the Los Angeles Times is uh, sounding more and more like the ALTs. Yes, these existential threats could mean humanity's extinction in the relative short term. And they are all dangers to us created by us. Once, I might have brushed that realization off and headed out to lunch. This time, I mentally added climate change to the list of potential calamities, and I grew worried. Yes. William McCaskill, an Oxford University philosophy professor, recently put threats like these in their proper historical context, noting that for most of mankind's existence, we humans did not have the ability to destroy ourselves, at least not entirely. Of course, we were often vicious and violent, and we killed each other to the very best of our abilities. But, until the mid-20th century, we did not have the technological wherewithal to wipe ourselves out. But then, 
thanks to the brilliance of our species, the same brilliance that cures diseases, erects skyscrapers, and launches moon rockets, we developed the atomic bomb. And, and, and as far as I can tell, this dude, there is no trace of irony when he actually suggests that erecting skyscrapers and launching moon rockets are a sign of human intelligence. And then, of course, you get to curing disease, which probably has done more to uh, curing, you know, human diseases has done more to uh, bring us to the brink of uh, collapse than erecting skyscrapers and launching moon rockets ever could. But then, of course, in the middle of all that, we developed the atomic bomb with our brilliance. Mm -hmm. I was born in the early years of the nuclear age, only a decade after Hiroshima. So I guess he and I, I guess Nick and I are about the same age in our 60s. When the notion of looming Armageddon was still relatively new in my childhood, we ducked and covered beneath our school desks. Bob Dylan released Talkin' World War Three Blues during 1962's Miss Cuban Missile Crisis. Even President Kennedy believed the chance of nuclear war was, according to JFK, quote, between one in three and even. But those days, those days, you know, during the Bay of Pigs, seem almost quaint and comforting now. The apocalyptic hazards have multiplied. Dun 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 dun. Dun 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 dun. dun. Okay, this is getting back. I, I, I should probably. I need to get to this, uh, you know, what he's basing this story on. Was a story by this McCaskill dude in the current issue of Foreign Affairs, a staid journal not known for sensationalism. He links you over to the, you know, to the article that this article is based on out of uh, foreign affairs, I should probably go and get, go to the, you know, original source. But quoting that article, <clears throat> quote, a worrying number of risks conspire to threaten the end of humanity. Advances in weaponry, biology, and computing could spell the end of our species, either through deliberate misuse or a large-scale accident. Close quote. And then he acts. Then he goes uh, quoting Senator Rob Portman. Quote: There are deadly risks over the horizon for which we are not prepared, said Senator Rob Portman recently as he introduced the Global Catastrophic Risk Mitigation Act. The Global Catastrophic Risk Mitigation Act to ensure that the U.S. is better prepared for, quote, high consequence events regardless of low probability, close quote. Yeah, we shall see how low the probability of high consequence events are. Shaken, I began to read up. Hmm. I had not focused on the dangers of runaway artificial intelligence or worried much 
when Elon Musk said machines would overtake humans by 2025 and constituted what Musk calls a, quote, fundamental existential risk, close quote. But it seems that plenty of other scientists and chief executives and government officials, including Bill Gates, yes, including Bill Gates and even Stephen Hawking before he died, have also worried about whether we are in full control of the technology we are developing. The nightmare scenario appears to be that machine intelligence could surpass human intelligence. Well, that's a pretty low bar if you ask me, you know. That's not asking that much of a machine. Okay, it really isn't. That's a pretty low bar to be smarter than a human. Yes. The nightmare scenario appears to be that machine intelligence, you know, could hop over the low bar and surpass human intelligence and turn destructive either maliciously or by accident. they sounding a lot like humans. Didn't he just... It sounded a whole lot like what he was talking about humans in the last paragraph. Anyway, it does not seem imminent, and AI's danger is often hyped or conflated with sci-fi, but the danger is not non-existent either. Hmm. Of more immediate concern is climate change. It is less dramatic, perhaps, but also more unstoppable because we have dithered for so long. The parade of climate horribles. There you go. The parade of climate horribles. If, com if emissions continue to rise unabated, goes well beyond hot days, brownouts, and lawn watering restrictions. Ultimately, water scarcity and intensified heat could lead to food shortages and malnutrition, mass migrations of tens of millions of people, conflict and war from heightened competition for minerals and water, and of course, collapsed economies. Okay, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try. I just can't help myself, so you might want to fast forward over the next couple of minutes. As for pandemics, we had been warned for years, and corona panic should have been our wake-up call. Corona panic has killed 0.08% of people so far, and the sledgehammer where we needed a fly swatter response to the corona panic cost the world economy trillions of dollars. I made a couple of editorial, I took a couple of editorial licenses in that last sentence. Yes. Future pandemics, though, will emerge more often, spread more rapidly, and kill more people. Yeah, like maybe the next pandemic will kill, what, ten times as many people. And this is according to this dude's own figures. So if this pandemic killed 0 0.08 of the planet. If the next pandemic kills 10 times as many people, you do the math because I'm losing. And I think that means instead of 0. Point, let me go over here to percentage calculator. It's 10 times 0 0.08, 0 0.8. So if the next pandemic 
kills ten times as many people as this one, then 99.2% of people on the planet will not die of the next pandemic, which is ten times. Anyway, we will see how many trillions of dollars that one cost the global economy. Yes. All right. And do you really believe we are better prepared for worst case pandemics now? Or will we be plunged right back in to the world of anti-maskers, anti-vaxxers, and science deniers pointing out that this pandemic, according to this man's figures, have not killed 99.92% of the planet. Anyway, guys, I'm going to shut up now. I think I've made my point. What is more a bioengineered pandemic seems possible and potentially deadlier than uh, this one that says not killed 99.9. You know, it's not that hard, guys, to bioengineer a pandemic that can kill more people than this last one. Sancho Panza, can you bioengineer a pandemic that will kill more than 0.08% of the planet? I said I would shut up anyway. This is my second drink. Okay, anyway, enough of Corona panic. Finally, finally, and it could be finally, the dangers of nuclear war have not gone away. There you go. The U.S. still has some 5,425 nuclear warheads in its arsenal, and Russia has 5,977. At a moment when relations between the two are increasingly hostile, seven other countries possess nuclear weapons, and others hope to attain them. Plenty of rational people have proposals to address these challenges. Yes, you know, including the rational people suggesting voluntary human extinction. Uh, <clears throat> they include enhanced global cooperation. There we go. Better risk assessment the development of advanced mitigation strategies and adoption of multinational rules to rein in work that could lead to dangerous outcomes. Uh -huh. I am for all of that, but it will be tough. We live in a time of resurgent hostility among the great powers, of renewed territorial and imperial ambitions. Russia is angry and China is rising. A lot of people say China is falling, but uh, according to this, Russia is angry and China is rising. The United Nations is on the defensive, and the U.S., for its part, is politically polarized and divided. The risks are so profound that, as the National Intelligence Council put it, they, quote, challenge our ability to imagine and comprehend their potential scope and scale, close quote. We, many humans, are not wired biologically as individuals or politically as a society to respond to long-term threats. We don't worry much about the future 
or take its needs into account. As individuals, we feel powerless. Compartmentalization is a natural defense mechanism. That is exactly what it is, and it's a pretty damn good one. I use it about 22 hours a day. My guess is I compartmentalize about 22 hours a day. But as much as I would like to bluster through my life enjoying myself while I still can and ignoring the impending threats, that is an increasingly irresponsible stance. Yes, enjoying, enjoying yourself is an increasingly irresponsible stance, according to Nick Goldberg in the Los Angeles Times. Do not get out there and enjoy it while you still can. Do not get out there and raise dahlias and, uh, what are these, gladiolas. Do not get out there and plant a garden. Get down and, 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 and get in a... Uh, and, and, and curl up in a uh, in a fetal position in the bottom of your closet and pull the blankets over your head. Yes, enjoying yourself is an increasingly irresponsible stance. Hmm. I will keep watching movies and celebrating birthdays. But we all need to get focused on the future and on making the world a safer place for our children's children. Speak for yourself, dude. Anyway, thank you, Nick Goldberg. Uh, we actually have some intelligent comments, so we're going to listen to We have... On a, on a planet of 8 billion people, five people have commented on this, and I'm going to read four of these. One of the comments, all they did was just repeat verbatim what Nick said and capitalized every word. So that's one comment. Here are the other four comments. Henry, more and more people are feeling it like a premonition, we seem unable to grasp how vulnerable we really are, how high the risk has become. We have created systems and accepted methods of living that are failing. They were okay back when the population was a fraction of what it is now. You will notice this is the first time you have ever heard the word population anywhere in this story. You had to get to the comments so Henry could tell you this. <clears throat> yes. But, now that we're, you know, 8 billion clueless morons, but they no longer work Good will and common sense have given way to selfish greed and what can I get away with? Drugs, virtual reality, and lowest common denominator entertainment are escapes from the confused, fearful drudgery of the day-to-day Religions have been corrupted and mostly irrelevant. Fantasies and lies outweigh the truth. Guns are murder weapons saturating society. Mankind is in serious trouble of its own making. Why have we done this to ourselves? How can we fix it? There is hardly any discussion about this, yet the signs are all around us. We have one thumb up. We're going to give Henry a 
We're going to get to let Henry get two thumbs up. You go, Henry, in the most intelligent commentary I've heard yet from Henry. Okay, let's hear from Stephen. Stephen, these threats are real. And I think one of one or the other will probably destroy humans. We are so pompous and awesome. I hate that word. That we really don't think the world's destruction is possible. I have pretty much lost faith in society. We are the only creatures that are aware on this planet. Sancho, are you aware on this planet or not? We are the only creatures that are aware on this planet, yet we are not able to solve many of the problems we have made and continue to make. We as humans are pathological. I want to say to the nine billion or so that we are out of time. There is no Hail Mary. We will become food for nature. The only real huh, the only real huh, the only real huh, 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 hope I have left is that the animals will still be here to eat us. Signed for all the children that are going to have to see what we have done. Yes, I love this. The only real hope I have left is that the animals will still be here to eat us. We're going to give uh, Stephen a... We're going to give Stephen a... a uh, that was the most, uh, I have to say... Uh, that knocked out of the ballpark anything that Nick Goldberg said. That is one of the great quotes uh, that I have heard. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Stephen, for making my day. Okay, AR says only one of the doomsday scenarios I do not agree with is artificial intelligence. We still have control of that, and it's not quite here yet until I see some iRobots, Terminators, and Robocops mass-produced. No worries there. I was in Walmart yesterday, and I saw a, uh, I saw a teddy bear. Uh, mopping the floor at Walmart. My roommate actually works at that Walmart. I have to ask uh, my roommate about uh, the teddy bear. Uh, my my camera battery was dead, of course. I could not take a picture. I'm going to get back there and get a picture of the teddy bear mopping the floor at Walmart. I don't think that this dude has been to Walmart recently. But we're going to wrap up with Maria. Okay, Maria, bring this to a close. I am scared. It's terrifying. Afraid for my children and grandchildren. Future and life. Our beautiful planet. The only... Huh, the only hope, uh, the only hope, okay, are we ready for the only H word, our government, yes, there you go, Maria, our government is wise enough to keep all of this world craziness under control and negotiate, I, huh, I uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. hope. Yes, Maria. Uh, Maria hopes that 
our government will be wise enough to keep this world craziness under control. I guess Maria is unaware that it is our government that is at least as responsible, you know, to the degree that the uh, global corporate talk, or well, the global government is simply an arm of the global corporatocracy, which is another way of saying the New World Order. Uh, I, obviously, Maria has not realized that it is the government uh, that has done as much as anybody to get us into the position that we are in today. But I'm going to wrap this one up, and uh, and I'm going to pre-record. I've touched on this one, but this one from Science Alert. Scientists studying Earth's trees issue a stark warning to humanity, but I will uh, put that one on tomorrow night. And then uh, I'm going to get out there and not take Nick Goldberg's advice. And I'm going to get out there and enjoy it while I still can. I'm going to spend a few days hanging out with my friends. The weather forecast, absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to take a few days off of the Doomosphere, hanging around with a bunch of Doomers. And we're going to eat a bunch of food, uh, drink some margaritas, uh, and hang out and uh, come join us while we enjoy it while we still can. My guys, little dog, we got to come back with another one about the trees, about all the dead trees that you pee on every day. <laughs>